Personal Capital and Mint are both great budgeting apps, but which one's better? Well, in today's video, I'm gonna show you the good, the bad, and the ugly for both apps so you can decide which is best for you. Hey there, Brittany Flammer here with videos all about budgeting and money saving tips for you and your family. If you've ever tried either of these apps, let me know in the comments down below. Both of these apps are completely free and they both have some great features, but there are some differences. So I'm gonna give you a little overview on the pros and cons of each of them to help you figure out which one is best for you. Both Personal Capital and Mint have fully functioning websites where you can access all of the account features. However, for this video today, I am gonna show you using the app on my phone. Let's go ahead and start with Personal Capital. If you click the hamburger icon, those three lines in the top, it will show you all the different tabs and different options for Personal Capital. By default, it's going to open you up to your net worth. By default, it is showing you your last 90 days. You can edit that and choose your own setting. There are a lot of options. And in the net worth, that line, you can scroll it back and forth to see your net worth at a specific date. I really love that feature. If you scroll down, it's gonna show you the amount for all of your assets and liabilities. It's gonna show you the total amount for each category. And then below that, if you keep scrolling, it's gonna show you how much you have in each individual account. You can also add your house to your net worth and if you add it it will automatically track the value of it using Zillow now I had issues doing this on the app in my phone I actually had to go to their website to add it just in case you're having issues try using the website now let's compare those features to mint in mint all of the tabs and different options are at the bottom of the screen and it is also automatically going to pull you up to your net worth you can click to expand and change the date range of the net worth there are not as many options as with personal capital but you can still customize it a little bit this tab will toggle between your net worth and your spending so if you click on that spending button it is going to compare this month's spending to last month's spending if you scroll down, it's going to give you an overview of all of your assets and liabilities. Now it's got the total for each category. And then if you click on a category, it will expand and show you all of your individual accounts. Now this also allows you to add property. You can add your house and it will automatically track the value of your house based on Zillow. You can add your cars and it will automatically track the value of your cars based on Kelly Blue Book. And you can manually enter any other property you might have that's worth money. You just manually enter how much it's worth. Now, going back to personal capital, let's look at transactions. Now, on the screen, you can toggle between all of your transactions, or you can see just your deposits or just your expenses. Like your net worth, the default is automatically set to the last 90 days, but you can adjust that. It will automatically categorize your transactions for you, but if something gets categorized in a way you don't like, you can edit it. You can choose from the categories they already have on hand, or you can create your own category. One thing to note with personal capital, you cannot manually enter transactions. So if you use a lot of cash that you want to add in, you are out of luck. The next tab is going to take you over to your cash flow. Now this is going to compare your cash flow from this month to last month. You can toggle between your incomes and expenses and it's the same as before you can adjust the transactions to the different categories that you want. If you go to the budget tab, it's going to compare your budget this month to last month. That circle, the outer ring is your spending for this month. The inner ring is your spending for last month. And the little dots on the edge represent the day. So the circle where you are is what day we are throughout the month. And that number in the middle is your budget for the entire month. If you click on that circle, it will take you to your monthly budget and you can change it. Now you can only enter in one budget. So one lump sum number for the entire month. You cannot enter in budgets for subcategories. That bar graph there is going to show you a comparison of your income and expenses for each month the previous year. Now let's switch back to Mint. Now all those categories I just mentioned on personal capital, you are going to find in Mint un under the monthly tab. You open up that monthly tab and you scroll down and it's going to access show you access to all of the different features let's start at the top it's going to show you this month's month's budget and how much you have left to spend that bar across the top is going to show you what you have already spent if you click on it this is where you can set up your actual budget it'll start with your income and then move on to expenses and you can do lots of editing here let's go ahead and look at expenses if you click on expenses it is going to expand and show you all the different categories of your expenses they call these budgets so you have one monthly budget, but then within your budget, you have lots of different budgets, which are really just your categories of expenses. You can click that pencil icon to edit. It will let you change 
the amount of the budget, and you can also delete that budget right here. If you want to rename a budget, you can't actually do that. You can delete the budget and then add a budget and you can choose from all of their pre-filled, preset categories. They have a lot of categories to choose from, but you cannot create your own category. Within the subcategories field, you can create your own name for subcategories, but with the categories, you're stuck with the options they have. To add a budget, just click on that plus sign and then choose from all the categories. That little bar graph or bar line is gonna show you in each budget or each category how you we're doing. Green means it's going to start at the beginning and go along as you spend. Green means good, you've still got money to spend. Yellow, time to stop. Red means you've overspent in your budget. Now, if we go back to the monthly tab and scroll down, you can see your cash flow. You scroll down even more, you can see your bills and you can get notified when your bills are coming up. Now, scroll down again and you will see your spending categories. This is going to show you how much you have spent for the month. You can click on that and it's going to sort by your transactions. You can click on a color. So for example, I'll click on yellow and that is going, those are my home expenses. So when I click on that, it's going to show me all of my transactions in that category for the month. Now, moving back over to personal capital, personal capital has a lot of features for investments. You can look at your portfolios to see those investments. You click on each investment individually and it'll show you all of your holdings, or you can go to the holdings and allocations tab and it is going to give you some more charts and more details on your investments there. There are even more options for investing. You can click to get a financial evaluation or you can click to meet with a financial advisor for investing. Now, looking at Mint, they do not have any tabs or specific specific features for investing. However, it does allow you to link all of your investing accounts so it will show up on your net worth. Now, both of these apps are completely free. Mint is free because they have ads in the app. So as you scroll through, you will see some ads. Personal Capital is free because if you use their financial advisors and start investing with them, they make money off of you that way. However, you do not have to use a financial advisor to use the app. Overall, both apps are great. It just depends on what you're looking for. Mint is hands down the best app if you are looking for a monthly budgeting app. Personal capital is not really for budgeting. Personal capital is better for giving you an overall evaluation of your financial situation. I can't believe I forgot to mention this. Personal capital has a referral program. When you're using the app, if you qualify, you will get a link. You can share that link with friends and family. If they sign up with personal capital using your link and they add an investment account with at least $1,000 in it, both of you get a gift card. It's currently $20 Amazon gift card for you and them if they're a new customer. For me, it just popped up in the app telling me about it. If you like personal capital, share it with your friends. In the comments down below, let me know which of these apps appeals to you. If you'd like to see more videos all about budgeting apps, check out my video right up there. I'm showing you my playlist all about budgeting apps. Otherwise, make sure you've subscribed to my channel and watch out for my next video coming all about online savings accounts. Thanks so much for watching. See you in the next video.